Okay. Wait, I can turn. No, wait, shit. That's not horrific, actually. Guys, I'm really excited because I, I just made not horrific lighting choices. Okay, let's see how this goes. By the way, the rule is if I cry, I get to stop. It's been a week. It's been a week, guys. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm figuring this out. You're not actually waiting for me. I'm going to edit this out. I don't want to look this stupid on camera. Like, a little stupid I'm okay with, but like this stupid, it actually hurts. Hello, my darling extraterrestrials. I'm Kim. This is Despots in Velicor, and today I'm coming to you from the floor. Because it is nighttime, and there is no sun, and so I had to MacGyver some lighting... And it was going to be really bad until I realized that the art light is actually has multiple brightness settings. So it's been a week, guys. It's been quite the week. And I am happy about all the things that are happening. But my God, am I busy. So we're going to do this. And we're going to do it fast so that I can sleep. I'm excited for sleep. I finally got my hands on another copy of To Kill a Kingdom. And I know to you guys it may seem like it was a week ago that I was talking about this. But for me it's more like two weeks. So I'm just really... I was at the library and they gave it to me. And I was just like, I'm so happy right now. The librarian looked at me like I was very, very strange. We're getting there, guys. Okay. That was tangent one of this video. I'm excited to see how many there are. To Kill a Kingdom, Alexandra Krista's debut novel, is the story of Lyra, the siren next in line to become the Siren Queen. No, the Sea Queen. Siren Queen is a different book. Her mother has been grooming her since infancy to become this merciless killer of men, ripping the heart from a prince's chest every year for her birthday and earning herself the title The Prince's Bane. But a misstep lands her in the Queen's disfavor, a position no one expects to survive, and the Queen punishes her by cursing her to a human's form. Abandoned in deserted waters, Lyra is rescued by Captain Elian, rogue prince, siren hunter, and, unbeknownst to him, Lyra's sworn enemy. This book travels across beautiful worlds, intricate political landscapes, and the space between enemies and not quite friends, while Lyra learns what it truly means to be queen. <laughs> okay, it was a sneeze. I'm not crying, which means I don't have to give up. So I'm having a really bad reading month for me, and I was just starting to get into To Kill a Kingdom when the library system stole it from me, by which I mean it expired, because as I said, I'm having a really bad reading month. So... Since this one is such a page turner, it was actually really, <laughs> I found it really tragic, actually, that they took my book from me because I was just starting to, like, get into the gears of reading again, um, by which I mean, after a week of not reading, I was getting into reading again. It's really surprising how a slump can feel much more like a slump than... Words are hard. Also, I've completely forgotten what I'm talking about. I don't know what's happening right now. I'm not sure where in that tangent I lost my point, but I'm pretty sure it was that this book is a page turner. It's really compelling and it has really interesting characters. And then there's the trope. The axis this book turns on is the enemies to lovers trope. And we have to talk about that. Enemies to lovers cannot exist if one party murders your whole family, or kills your uncle in order to marry his wife and become duke, or throws you in a vat of acid in order to brainwash you into loving him. I'm really not sure how that Harley Quinn plotline worked, by the way. It might not have been acid. This is tangent number three. 
Anyway, enemies to lovers can't work if you are actually enemies. Enemies to lovers can work if there is a third party that is the enemy and you just have to figure out that you've been pitted against each other against your will. Which this book does, thank God. In the context of To Kill a Kingdom, Elaine... Elian? I'm going to call him Elaine, and then they're going to sound like lesbians. But they're not lesbians. It's, it's a head couple. This is tangent number four. Five? I have lost count of my tangents. What is his name? It's Elian. Elian. In the context of To Kill a Kingdom, Lyra and Elian are enemies because the Sea Queen's tyrannical rule forced sirens to become murderous hunting beasts when they could be a much more evolved society. And Elian is seeking vengeance for his royal cousins who were slain by siren hands. The key element here is coercion. Under the emotional and physical abuse of her mother, Lyra is convinced that the only way to earn any love and respect is to become the same monster that her mother is. I'm not saying Lyra is innocent, she is not, but that's one of my favorite parts of the book. She's learning that there could have been another way. So, if you are interested in far-off places, daring sword fights, magic spells, a princess in disguise, and some sirens and mermaids and pirates, check out To Kill a Kingdom by, by what's her name? Alexandra Christo. Oh my god, I'm so tired. <laughs> I really did enjoy this book. I just really want to go to sleep. Anyway, when you read this book, tell me what you thought of it. I will probably be more awake in order to commune with you about how amazing and fun this book is. Abiento. Mm-hmm.